So before we move ahead with uh, the agenda today, now let's try to catch the mouse once again. This is where we closed yesterday. We said that the uh, mouse trap should catch the mouse, should not harm the mouse, and at the same time, the mouse trap should not harm peddlers in toddlers. So we have we had this contradiction. If a hammer is closed, it does not harm the pet toddler. to be slow like one way and then these were the uh, inventive standards that we could have applied based on the contradiction matrix we are going to deal with the contradiction matrix in greater detail today and this is the problem statement that we formulated when we were trying to solve the same problem of we were trying to solve the problem of mouse trap itself but during trimming we were trying to solve it from the angle of cost reduction and we said that mouse should perform the function of holding the mouse by the or another component which is already there should deliver the functionality of holding the mouse. And we finally said that, okay, this is one thing that we want to get done to the extent possible. Okay. And uh, interestingly, we said that uh, we go, we'll ask everybody, whoever has attended these sessions, to provide their entries on what is the thought process that they have on how can we deal with this problem. You have received two entries, so uh, thanks to those two guys. I have found a pause for these two people who have actually given their entries. The first entry is Alad Desai. She is pursuing them to Bapi. And uh, she has given two solutions. The first one is where she tries to replace the house trap hammer with a net. Okay, so that the mouse comes in, the net falls on the mouse, and one minute, uh, Rohan, by please, please, excuse me. I would request uh, some of the candidates, Mike is unmute, in the unmute stage. I think there uh, are. Uh, yeah, now it is clear. Please, Rohan, by please carry on. It's clear now. Okay. Yes, it's clear. Oh, yes. Yeah, please. We were saying that we received two entries from two, two individuals who've tried to resolve this problem. And I was saying, uh, let's clap for these two people. In a virtual meeting, still we should, and these two people who have provided their thought process and their entries. Thanks a lot. To Mayur and Dalak, who have actually gone from gone ahead and provided solutions. I think my screen is not visible, right? Yes, yes, it is not. I don't know what happened. Give me a moment. It's visible now. Yes, now now it is. Okay. So the first solution from Zalak is she would want to replace the hammer with a net or a cage, I would say. So that when the mouse gets in, it gets the cage falls on the mouse and the mouse gets trapped. And the other solution that she's given is uh, the plate has a sticky material and the bait is with anesthetic fixed on it. It will just get the mouse, it will put the mouse to a deep sleep and you can take it out. Um, good thought process. I would I must say that the thought process is really nice. However, in the first one, uh, when the cage is falling, you don't really know the, the, whether the mouse is completely inside the cage or not. So that's, that becomes like a secondary problem to solve. How to judge when the mouse is completely inside and then only the cage should fall. Imagine the mouse is half inside the cage and half outside the cage. Very tricky situation. Second one, uh, the plate is of a sticky material, so 
so you, the secondary problem here is you should manage the stickiness of the plate such that the mouse does not get permanently stuck on the plate and the weight which is having an anesthetic is good enough for to put the mouse to sleep the second one would work and uh, what is very interesting is somebody from the pharma segment is trying to solve such engineering problems and this is really nice this is really very encouraging the second solution the second set of solutions i must say i have received from mayur hero uh, correct if i'm uh, imis announcing your name uh, the gentleman has given about six solutions and he has also used uh, the inventive standard changing properties where he says that we can use a rubber or a padded hammer which can hold the mouse but is not harm it quite interesting nice the first one is and a programmed optical sensor which detects whether it is a mouse or a pet and then triggers the hammer a weight sensor placed under the plate which detects mouse or the weight a weight of the mouse to trigger the hammer this is the principle of counterweight that we've been talking about yesterday that's being used here the third is an elevated flexible base on which the bait is placed so that the mouse gets inside it a bait placed on an elongated cage with one door through which the mouse goes inside completely and moves the bait which triggers the door to close interesting one i must say so he is thinking in a very good direction okay i must say and now what i'll do is i share a few solutions that have been there in the market and uh, which are even available on amazon and uh, uh, if somebody wants you can buy it from there as well so this is the first solution that's available what do you guys understand of when you look at this i i would like to understand from you guys aapko kya samajhta hai ye ye image dekh ke how would it function actually some kind of ray that attracts rats uh -huh. okay just like the mosquito catcher okay okay anybody else making noise uh, that making noise that intensity will be high so rat will be away from, from that noise from parth i have a suggestion that says it probably gives shock okay what else so one just spoke that uh, it will produce some high energy sounds that will keep the rat away okay keep the rat away interesting That's, that's a very interesting way which you guys are thinking i really like it but i, I think rohan it is written rat killer so it is not that it will scare the rat and uh, i think it will kill the rat that is something what right which we are not looking for okay okay so this is one of the Morley says the door will be closed the moment the rat enters. Interesting, that's right. Sonic wave which affects the rat. This is from Kiko 1819. The material of net also matters. Okay. Is everybody able to see my screen? Yes, yes. I think looking at the label field, Rohan, it is going to kill the rat rather than you know scare the rat away. Yeah. Okay. Dr. Jayadeep Patel says that due to high decibel noise, continuously rat will not come near. So Tushar says that since it says rat killer, it will kill the rat, which is right. The way it is. But the point is, how does it really function? And by the way, this is a patented uh, product, right? Huh? This is a patented product. So what happens here is. You see a socket. When you connect it to the plug, there are uh, light emitting components here. So as soon as the mouse gets in, gets in and gets in, the board that comes out and it will just kill the rat. 
using an electric shock. Yes. So it is actually a rat killer. The but only a mouse gets in complete. So this, uh, this aspect is taken care of. We say that can humans get harmed? The humans are not going to get harmed. The toddlers are not going to get harmed. But yes, if only this only the mouse gets completely inside. And this edge gives a signal that there is something that has already come in completely. Okay, then only this gets activated. It gives a shock to the mouse and dies. Or it might just survive, but then this shutter also closes. This portable shutter is a pull down and closes the door. Okay, so this is uh, similar to what you had said that a, a program optical sensor which detects whether it's a mouse or a pet and then triggers the hammer. Here it's not triggering the hammer. Here it's triggering the shock and closing the door. Basically, okay. Now, what is the solution that we arrived at? This looks like a relatively costly solution. Not be used anywhere. It has a multitude of uh, uh, constraints. At the same time, it's also killing the mouse. Remember, we didn't want to kill the mouse. We just wanted to catch the mouse. Killing the mouse was nowhere in the scheme of things. I think the major constraint is that it requires electricity, so it right. cannot be used at any location. Uh, right. It it should be uh, so that is the major constraint that I can see. Right, that's a huge constraint. It that's a very huge constraint because it cannot be used anywhere and everywhere. So wherever you need it, you probably need to find an electric point which is close to the space so that the system functions perfectly. At the same time, when we were doing, we were trying to solve this problem earlier. This is taking care of this aspect that it's not going to hurt people, okay? But this thing is not taking care of the aspect which says that, which says that it is not costly, okay? This thing becomes really costly. This thing becomes costly. This thing is going to consume electricity. This itself looks pretty costly, so it can get spoiled also pretty easily. So there are a lot of constraints to it, the super system constraints. Now, how do we get rid of this? That I can think of is uh, instead of having the plug uh, inserted into the socket for charging, uh, I think we can use some batteries. Uh, uh, so which, which make it makes it uh, a sort of an automatic kind of a thing. Okay. Uh, the voice got lost. Tushar, could you please repeat that once again? Uh, I think the major hindrance that we see here is the adapter is required to uh, put it in the socket and to charge this. So instead of that, we make it adapter free and we put batteries inside this so that uh, it can work and it can be placed at any location as far as the batteries are in working condition. Right, right, right. So we get rid of the constraint of placing it close to an electrical socket. Right, agreed. Agreed. So now, uh, Abhitak, operational cost may be only at the cost of the bit that was there. Now we add the cost of the battery as well. Okay. So this will work as long as the battery is going to last. After that, it may not work. But remember, we wanted something that is cheap. All right. So now I'll show the solution that we actually coined um, a few years ago. What if the mouse catches itself? You see this device that's there. It has a door and it has the bait placed at the rear end, right here. Okay. And such a thing that emanates a lot of smell. It would definitely attract the mouse to come in. So in this scenario, the mouse is catching itself. The mouse gets in in search of the bait, and you see this is tilted slightly above the ground. So as soon as the mouse gets in, it stays inside because the door here closes. So the mouse would get in, 
and because of the weight of the mouse this thing is going to tilt on the in the other direction the door is going to come down and close it and now if the mouse tries to move in this direction this will reinforce the door further and will not let it open the weight of the mouse itself is acting as a lock to the door now so yes the job is done we don't need batteries we don't need chargeable battery we don't need electrical points there's no hi fi uh, optical sensors that are needed to detect when the mouse is getting in the mouse itself tells us when it gets in the mouse itself locks itself inside and it ensures that it does not come out that easily so what yeah, in this uh, what sort of a metal uh, what sort of a material is being used to make this uh, module it's a plastic it's a polymer based plastic material it's a pretty cheap material that's available everywhere these days so it multi it's a multi use thing or it's uh, like once uh, you can use it once so we have seen only okay. up to here now you can release the rat okay you can just open it and release it on the other end on this end that you see there's a cap that's there okay so you just go and release this cap see the person who's holding it from this end has opened this cap and the mouse runs away so this is serving the purpose of catching the mouse this is serving the purpose of not killing the mouse this is pretty cheap since it's just a plastic cut up and we know how cheap plastic is these days yeah and but like if somebody wants to buy this uh, you said it is available on amazon i guess so yeah, how much will this cost it it was it was not a very costly stuff it's a, it was something that was around 40 or 50 bucks if i'm not wrong wow i had i had sample and i don't know my kid used to play with it so he yeah, has kind of kind of misplaced it somewhere or else i would have shown you guys wow this is super what's what so yes a device that is pretty cheap and that's available okay now that we have discussed what we were trying to do for the past few days let's go back to what is the agenda for the day so we have done these things it's history of trace function modeling cost reduction using trace contradiction solving of the problem and there was a problem that we were trying to solve for the past few days today we have seen the solution that we have to that problem okay today we are going to talk about the matrix the contradiction matrix which we were, which was briefly introduced yesterday which was briefly introduced when we were trying to resolve technical contradictions because uh, contradiction matrix is a way of resolving technical contradictions okay so it was briefly introduced today we will go into this concept in a little bit of detail okay so what exactly is contradiction matrix it is a matrix which provides a systematic access to most frequently used solutions for resolving problems in a specific condition specific type of contradictions in contradiction matrix the specific type of contradiction is explained by predefined typical engineering parameters so what you see here are engineering parameters defined by altschuler and his uh, followers back in 1940s okay so now you see that this is something that was done long ago and it's valid even today so now that we know that the matrix can function only based on the uh, these parameters i didn't get your voice who is this I'm not really trying to speak for any of the systematic answers to most frequently used solutions. For resolving problems in a specific condition, specific type of contradiction. Okay. 
uh, I am hearing a lot of echo. Is, is there some problem somewhere? Probably was I hearing my own voice or somebody was trying to say something? Hello? I think it's clear on right now. Okay. Mr. Rates, uh, I think his microphone is uh, on. On Mr. Rates would request you to please keep your microphone in a mute mode. Yes, Ron, right. Please carry on. Okay. So I have a question coming here from Kiku one eight one nine. She is saying that, but as per my knowledge, few big rats can actually eat it up. I mean, they can bite away polymer, which is right. Rats can actually bite polymer. They can actually bite plastic. So, you guys tell me what can be the solution in such a scenario? Some hard plastic. So we need to look at a harder material for replacement. Why? Why can't it be tin? Tin sheets are cheaper, isn't it? I'm not talking about proper metal. Tin sheets rats cannot bite through tin sheets, and they are relatively not that costly as well. Some yeah. cheap metal, right? Right. So yes. When we, uh, so, Chris has a very interesting way of going for a solution. You know? It says that uh, there are some problems and there are solutions, and then there are some secondary problems. So, it's not necessarily that the first solution that you have come across is going to be the final solution. It might just have some other secondary problems. When you solve those secondary problems, looking at them, how to resolve them. As the secondary problems are tough enough that you're not able to use your general thinking and common sense to solve them, run it through this once again. So yes, Tiku, I guess, uh, Devapri, I guess, uh, huh, that's the name. Devapri, I guess we've answered your question, right? Now let's get back to the presentation once again. And we have a nice suggestion coming from Dr. Patel, who says that we can coat with substance which can keep the rat away from biting. So basically, I, if I'm right, what he's trying to suggest is we should coat it the uh, walls of this rat trap with material that will keep them away from biting onto the walls. So that's also a very nice idea. It basically has opened your hot windows, isn't it? Now you guys have started thinking in various directions. Now that we have actually uh, taken the problem to an abstract stage where we say that, okay, you know, I don't want you to reduce the cost of mouse trap. I'm going to tell you what to do to reduce the mouse cost of the mouse trap. You guys have started thinking, and you guys have started thinking in a very interesting way. There are so many solutions coming in. That's really hard thing to see. Okay, uh, so now we are talking about contradiction matrix. What you see here is uh, there is an arrow that says worsening feature, there is an arrow that says improving feature. Now, how do we look at this matrix? If you remember when we were looking at the solution yesterday, uh, when we were looking at the contradiction matrix yesterday, we said that this is the contradiction. Hammer is slow, but it does not harm the petals of the turtle, but it does not hold the mouse. If the hammer is passed, then it holds the mouse sufficiently, but it harms the petal of the toddler. Now, here you see on the left hand side, we are seeing object generated harmful factor as one of the matrix components. Okay. And on the right hand side, you see speed. 
So, what is the feature that's improving as a way of this contradiction? Okay. On the improving feature, we consider that parameter, which is right now in a bad condition, which needs to be improved. Okay. So, the object generated arm was what was needed to be improved. In current condition, the speed was already good, but then it was harming humans or toddlers or pets. So, this is what needed to be improved. So, in the matrix, we considered that this as the improving feature. And what was deteriorating before because of the improvement of this feature? That was speed. So, when we look at the contradiction matrix, we try to look at it this way. On the improving factor, we try to find the feature which we want to improve. On the worsening factor, we select that feature which is worsening because we are improving this feature. It's, it's clear how to look at the matrix. Okay. So now that we know that there is a matrix, that there is a matrix that matrix is of solution. What I'll do is I'll stop sharing this and share the matrix with you guys so that you guys can have a look at how the matrix actually looks like. Ah. The Excel is visible now. Visible. Okay. So what you see here is the contradiction matrix. There are 39 parameters on the rows. And those same 39 parameters are there on the columns as well. This looks very similar to the matrix that we used to construct before we were we wanted to do the function model. So the interaction matrix, this looks similar to the interaction matrix. The only difference being we have the 39 parameters here, and these cells, the numbers that you see, these are the inventive standards that are that can be used to solve the contradiction of these specific parameters. Okay. So when we were solving yesterday, we were looking at the worsening parameter as improving parameter as object generated arm, which will be here in number 30. And then we were trying to match it with the speed, which is number nine. So this is number nine speed, and this is 31 object generated. Number factors, and we had these four inventive principles that the matrix registered we should use to solve the problem that we are trying to resolve right now. Okay, and that's how we said that. Okay, now we use these principles to resolve the problem. Now, before we get into the inventive standards, I would want to take you guys through these thirty-nine parameters one after the other. We'll just browse through them and next we'll go to the standards. I'm trying to share another screen. Rohan, sorry, I didn't uh, get it. Like in the matrix, uh, one thing that I could see was the numbers written over there. So were right. were they those numbers which were being given sequence like uh, from what all things they interact with? Uh, is that the numbers that has been placed in the columns? No, no. Hold on your thoughts for a moment. These numbers are specific numbers that are given to inventive standards. So the premise of this is thirty nine parameters and forty inventive standards. Okay. This says okay. that everything in this world fits into these 39 parameters. There are no parameters other than these 39. 
and okay. all the problems concerning these 39 parameters can be solved by 40 inventive principle there is not a 41st way there are only 40 ways in which the problems related to all these 39 different parameters can be resolved this is what okay. is talks when it talks of technical contradiction i am not talking about physical contradiction just yet it's just technical okay. contradiction okay so right now we are looking at what here is the uh, parameter okay and these numbers are the number of inventive standards so inventive standard number 7 number 17 number 4 number 35 we will have number inventive standards from number 1 up to number 40 that is what we will have a look at today and we will also have a look at these 39 parameters okay okay so now i'll take you back to the presentation where we have a look at the parameters so in my opinion we need to have a look at the parameters before we will we'll go at the inventive standards because you need to understand what parameters each of these parameters talk again i would like to reiterate don't ask me for a copy of this this is the part of level 1 course but then for your benefit it's available on the net i can actually not give it out to you guys it's it's available free you can download it from somewhere so the first parameter is weight of a moving object second parameter is weight of a non moving object so it is differentiates between stationary and moving objects as such okay then it's the length of a moving object length of a non moving object area of a moving object and similarly the next would be area of a non moving object you see over here the definitions are very clear it says the mass of a sub system element or technique in gravitational field the force that body exerts on its support or suspension on the surface on which it rests a moving body is one which changes position on its own or as a result of some external force so there are very clear definitions we are trying to work out which parameter would be active fit in you can really look at the parameter and read through the definition you will be in a position to find out if this actually fits in for example when we were talking about the rat trap problem we were talking about the working feature of velocity speed the velocity of sub system the rate of process action in time that can be measured by any linear unit of length divided by a time okay so it's talking about speed it was pretty clear there so area of a moving object volume of a moving object volume of a non moving object speed force is derived differently here tension or pressure then when we were talking about the contradiction with, rel with relation to <clears throat> the fan you remember that you guys yesterday we were talking about the blade gets bent one of the parameters we considered was shape which is the external contour or boundaries okay the other another parameter that we considered when we were talking about the fan problem itself we were we said that durability of a moving object why did we not say it's a non moving object because fan rotates it's not a stationary object it's a moving object so the time during which the sub system can perform useful and or neutral function it can be estimated as average period between failures and the service life that's why we considered this because we assumed that as soon as the fan blade is bent it's a failure though it does not clearly come out it does not stop working altogether but it stops performing the function that it was intended to perform <clears throat> then there are other parameters like brightness then there is something like energy spent by a moving object energy spent by a non moving object power waste of energy waste of a substance loss of information waste of Time, amount of substance, reliability. Parameter is a predefined Rohan in Tris. Yes, yes, they are predefined. These definitions are actually been given by Alchemy long ago. Okay. okay. And now that when we are reading this, something that's a little off track from this topic, Tris says that there are only seven fields in the world that can help you perform anything, and this uh, logic is called as matchm in matchm m stands for mechanical a for acoustic t for thermal ch for chemical e for electrical and the last m for magnetic 
and then there are these two new fields that are being introduced which is i and b which is information and b stands for biological field so as per tris if there is a problem that has to be solved and if you have come across a contradiction you have picked up an inventive standard from the contradiction matrix you apply start applying one of these fields magnetic field mechanical field acoustic field thermal field chemical field so even when we were doing a rack track problem we initially said and the cheapest and actually the cheapest among these fields is the mechanical field okay so when we were closing the door it's a mechanical action it's a mechanical field and somebody said that you know it's producing some sort of a vibration that ensures that the mouse does not come we were talking of an acoustic field when we said that you know uh, we could have actually found a way where said that ki mouse ko we could have used the thermal field or when we, we could have probably said that we can do a thermal imaging and find out whether it is a mouse or it is a non mouse object that's coming you do a thermal imaging find out if it's mouse then you activate it you could have used the thermal field and equal when we said that okay we will put in some sort of an anesthetic there we are utilizing the chemical field electrical field we already saw that there is a electrical component already exists so these things actually give you direction things in which you should look at for solutions <clears throat> matcam field keep the matcam field in mind keep the contradiction matrix and the inventor standards in mind i don't think there is any problem in this world that you are not in a position to solve unless you formulate the contradiction properly if you can formulate the contradiction properly you will be in a position to resolve the problem period so there are these particular nine parameters and one of the interesting things that i find is see all these parameters that you look at these are physical parameters they can be measured okay in some way or other but you are smart enough to identify that there are some parameters that even if not measurable they are causing a lot of problem like we talk about harmful factors acting on the object the susceptibility of the system to externally generate harmful effects now when we said that when somebody said uh, i think devo priya said that the mouse can eat away through plastics so now there is a harmful effect object that's there and now if we try to define it in the way of a contradiction that if we use plastic then the mouse eats away with eats away the plastic and what is the good part of using the plastic it's probably easily available or something like that or it's easy to make easy to use something of that sort and similarly we say that you know if we use some other metal and that will formulate only if we have another material in mind we can formulate a contradiction there and say that okay there is a harmful effect that's acting on the object and what would be the opposite of this if we use some other metal what would be the opposite the harm would not happen but what would the other metal actually do so if say for example we say that if we use uh, iron for that matter the uh, if we use iron it will not be able to eat it away but it makes it heavy but if we make if we make it of iron the rat is not able to eat it away but the device becomes heavy or the device becomes costly and if it is heavy it will stop functioning because it has to go down by the weight of the mouse itself so if we look at the problem from the perspective of weight and harmful act factor of acting on the object the inventive standard that it would point at is either it will be using composites or it will be in similar direction which says that okay now you need to use composite you need to use vacuum or air so some sort of a bubble material so we can have metal foam there i hope you guys know of metal foam as well metal foam can be used the mouse will not be able to eat it away but at the same time it's not heavy it's cheap as well so that's how you can formulate contradiction because he has used he has provided these factors as well which talk about ease of use ease of repair adaptability complexity of the device complexity of control level of automation ease of production productivity these are the things that he has talked about in the 39 parameters now now that we have talked about 39 parameters and we know that these parameters are there i will not go through the definition of each one of them 
in the best interest of time because we have very little time here. We also have to go through some inventive standards. Uh, now we will actually shift at looking at the inventive standards. Okay. Just give me a minute. The word principles are also used interchangeably for the inventive standards. Thing is visible. That is a word of confirmation. Screen is visible. Yes. Good enough. Okay. So now we'll go through 40 principles or 40 inventive standards. These are the principles. The first one is segmentation. Second one is extraction. First, we'll go through the complete list of it because I think we'll not be in a position to go through the uh, the details of each one of them. Uh, so we'll just go through the names at least, and then we'll go through the details of few of them. Okay. Uh, so segmentation when you break one component into multiple parts, extraction. Local quality, asymmetry, consolidation, universality, nesting, counterweight, prior counter action, prior action. So when we say prior action, you perform the action which you want to happen in future. Like if you want to tear something, you corrugate that from the portion you want to get tear, tear that off. That's prior action. Prior counter action is quite opposite. When you want something to happen, you perform prior anti-action. Okay, question in advance, EQ potentiality, do it in reverse, spheroidality, partial or excessive action, transition into a new dimension, transition into a new dimension is used, mechanical vibration, periodic action, continuity or continuous action, Rushing through, converting harm into benefit, one of my personal favorites. Feedback. Feedback is what we saw day before yesterday when we, were, when we were trying to solve the problem. Mediator, cell service, copying, porous material, changing the color, homogeneity, flexible membranes or thin flame, pneumatic or hydraulic construction, replacement of mechanical system, disposing of, rejecting and regenerating parts, transformation of properties. Phase transition. Okay, now I think I will not read through the names. Let's go through a few of them. Okay, let's see segmentation. Uh, you guys must have seen when we when we are generally trying to transport that it's really big, cannot be transported easily. It's broken into parts, and that's how it's transported. Divide an object into independent parts so that the action can be done easily. A 90 degree elbow in a large air duct is segmented for better airflow and turbulence reduction. Where you need, you don't want to have turbulent flow, you want streamlined flow. You would want to do this in such scenarios. <clears throat> Making an object sectional. Imagine you want a temporary street light. You, you will have you would have broken it into multiple types or make it flexible folding. We have folding chairs in our houses. For the ease of moving the chair from one place to another place, we have folding tables, uh, what we call as picnic tables or picnic chairs. This is this is something that we see day in and day out. Development of roller conveyors, extraction. Now this is very interesting. Doctor, I have a pain in the lower tooth on the left. After this is extracted. <clears throat> Extracting is distributing the part of property from an object. Okay, so over here, what you see is instead of lifting many high intensity lights by balloons, only one reflector is lifted. Lights are installed in the ground and beam towards the reflector. So you have one object that's lifted, that's extracted, and it focuses on the whole stadium. 
to reduce over exposure of x rays radiation chest a special lens is designed to limit the x rays only to the needed area as well as something that we are using right now also so <clears throat> let's go to local quality different parts of an object to carry out different functions all the parts need not do the same function a dust filter is made with porous membranes the outer membranes has large pores for preliminary filtration while in the membranes has fine pores to collect small particulates it is very similar to the water filters that we have in house there are different components there is a uv light there is a reverse osmosis that's happening there are several components that are there for each of the different components that's there constituents of dirty water to get rid of each of the different constituents asymmetry now this is an interesting picture you see a fat woman sitting on the right and a thin guy sitting on the left driving the car so on the right of course the car would feel disbalanced so there are three wheels placed on the right as as compared to this one wheel placed on the left counterbalancing it basically replace symmetrical form with asymmetrical forms a device to straighten a wire consists of two rollers convex and concave make a symmetrical around the y axis to speed the production and increase the quality these things are there in application this today that's why we are talking about such examples the driving drum of a stone wheel is positioned under vehicle at an angle to better grip the snow because of the slippage that happens in such scenarios <clears throat> if you guys would have observed these mini trucks that we have tata as uh, ashok kelandos the wheel the rear wheel is slightly bent inside have you guys observed this if you look at their rear wheel that's slightly bent on the inside that's an asymmetry that's induced with a purpose i i thought they are bent because of the wheel no they are actually bent for a purpose i know many people observe this and people generally think why is this bent inside it's bent inside to ensure that when it is loaded those wheels come slightly out and they don't go beyond the angle uh, line of the axle because if they go beyond the line of the axle the axle will break and the the uh, the whole axle the rear axle will break rendering the device useless it will not function that's why they, 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 there is a prior action that's done it bends slightly inside and both of these are not bent at the same angle if you observe it carefully so when, when you guys are observing it try to observe it carefully both of them are not bent at the same angle consolidation it's nice to catch fish and cook at the same time consolidate in space homogeneous object or objects designed for continuous operations two lifts are combined to carry a wide load to accomplish task this task the joining partitions are removed you guys must have seen this happening in uh, big hotels you know when you go and you say that i have a 500 people seminar to be conducted this that the room that you are standing in has a partition we remove the partition this room become big and now you can house 500 people you need the space for 200 people we put the partition back in a smaller room at a smaller cost so that's consolidation my friends universality an object can perform several different functions therefore other elements can be removed the best example that i can think of over here is a swiss knife the swiss swiss knife is a nail cutter the swiss knife is a portable screwdriver the swiss knife has a bottle opener it, it has almost 14 different objects all under one roof so this one swiss knife can knife can do hundreds of different things nesting and you see a very interesting example standing right here increasing the sound one object is placed inside another that object is placed inside a third one so on and so forth what is the best example of nesting that you can think of tell me guys tissue tissue papers 
tissue papers tissue book. you don't have multiple tissue papers one inside the other next this is not the right answer next a stack of disposable glasses right it com it uh, occupies less space one of the interesting examples that we have is i have lived in mumbai for a very long time mumbai has a long monsoon and you have these umbrellas everybody has to carry one you can't carry a long umbrella so these folding umbrellas you see the telescopic tubes when you open the umbrella this becomes the handle becomes large but the tube goes one inside the other the inside the other and become so small that it will actually fit into a pocket people who are from mumbai will appreciate this example and understand very clearly so that's one example of nesting selfie stick right monica singh selfie stick is true so the umbrella is an example of nesting we have these dolls also that you must have seen this one doll inside the other and then inside the other counterweight this uh, we came across yesterday where we read this example balloon self temporarily suspend a cable over the river so the weight of the cable is acting downwards because of gravity you affix balloons to the cable adding a counterweight which pulls it upwards takes it against gravity prior counter action we would counter tension to an object to compensate excessive and undesirable stress during the production of corrugated tartans corrugated paper is bent in opposite direction of cover paper when the glue dries the cartons become flat see preload counter tension an object to compensate excessive and desirable stresses yeah they were pre saying just like the doll example there are utensils of same kind one side the other true that's also an example of nesting zalak desai has a question how does segmentation differ from nesting that's a very interesting question segmentation we are telling that i am dividing one object into several other objects and in nesting we say that they are all the same objects but they can be kept one inside the other uh, to tell you the example of uh, segmentation which you guys probably might be in a position to appreciate better what if i told you ki the ceiling fan that you are buying it is pre assembled you cannot disassemble it and take it you have to carry it that way how difficult would that be isn't it you cannot carry a single uh ceiling fan that way so that segmentation you break it into parts which are easily carry carry or for any purpose prior contraction we have gone through prior action prior action we already read an example just now about when we said that tata is ka ya fir dost ka tire is bent slightly inside that's an example of prior action as well positioning in advance Questioning is advanced. The uh, example of uh, uh, Stephanie is also an example of questioning in advance. You know that the tire will go flat somewhere or the other, and you have a backup. Equipotentiality. Change the condition of the work in such a way that it will not require lifting or lowering an object. A container is not loaded directly onto the truck. Instead, it is lifted slightly by a hydraulic cylinder, then slid inside the truck. We have seen this happening, haven't we, in many places? 
change the condition of the work in such a way that it will not require lifting or lowering an object. Truck for transporting large pre-stressed concrete pipe does not lift pipe. It inserts wheel arm through the pipe slightly and lifts it, carries it to the destination. So these are examples of eco potentiality. Do it in reverse. If you can't do it in the right direction, now you are opposing correct. <laughs> Interesting. Instead of direct action, take any problem, implement the opposite action. I have a very interesting example. How many of you have seen those uh, kanche wale kola bottles? The bottles that have the marble inside. You guys have seen that soda bottle yes, that has yes. a marble inside? That's Boti a good example. Ha. Boti soda, absolutely. So what you do is you fill in the soda inside and because of the gas, it pushes the uh, uh, marble up and it locks it, it locks it. So you don't have to lock it. It was always a problem to, you know, seal the bottles in earlier days. This is what was developed and it is interestingly being used by a Japanese company even today. Try <coughs> reality. Replace linear parts with curved parts, flat surfaces with spherical surfaces, and cube shapes with ball shapes. Like, like we do quite often, we roll things up when we have to carry them. That's spherodality. Use roller, roller balls, spirals, and agriculture to law has rollers instead of blades. This allows for effective move at twice its normal speed. <coughs> A pizza cutting blade. That's another example of plurality. Dynastic. An electrical blade with a ribbon shaped electrode has radius R, which can be changed during the welding process to control the size of the welding. Rotating skirt for, for dancing tricks. You know, if you're even if you're dancing at, you're rotating at 10 RPM. The skirt shows that you're rotating at 40 RPMs, giving a different view to the viewer. Dynamicity. This is partial or excessive action. If it's difficult to obtain 100% of a desired effect, achieve more or less of the desired effect. To reduce the amount of reagent used when preventing hail, only the part of the cloud that is responsible for the hail production is bombarded. This is for artificial rain. We are bombarding the cloud to induce rains. While manufacturing a magnetoconductor, a ceramic plate is covered with excessive ferromagnetic and conducting material. The excess is then machined off, leaving the correct layers of the channels in play. This is done quite often. Transition into a new dimension. The plowing mechanism for an ice skating arena is placed under the vehicle. Trans transition from 1D to 2D, 2D to 3D. Utilize material composition of objects in time an object or place on its side. Vertical storage of wooden logs. Mechanical vibrations. These things can be used very often. To reduce cooking time, use turbulence or low frequency acoustic vibrations. People who are fond of cooking can try finding ways of doing this. If oxidation exists, increases frequency to ultrasonic level, and then you will not observe the oxidation even if it is existing. Parts are cleaned in the solution using ultrasonic vibrators. Periodic action. If you don't want to do it uh, all at once, you can do it periodically. To achieve better results, the best example periodic action is exercise. People say that you should exercise every morning to stay fit. You cannot stay fit in one shot. You cannot become fit in one day. You have to exercise every day. So that's periodic action that you're doing. Continuity of useful action. 
carry out an action without a break. All parts of the object should constantly operate at full capacity. A soldering device has a solder tip in the shape of a roller to continue for continuous action. Now, an interesting example that I see of over here is uh, if somebody does a great work in your office and he is being obstructed by something, find out what obstructs him, eliminate the obstruction, and he will continue the useful act and you'll get a lot of better results. Rushing crew. We do this many times unknowingly, you know. Many times unknowingly we do this. If there is something that's going to cause harm to me, I just rush through it to reduce, to minimize the harm. How many of you guys have done uh, fire walk? Or how many of you guys have done a walk on broken glasses? When you are walking on fire, huh, Pichwadiya Parth says, I have, you have seen or you have done part. See. So, when you see, you observe that the person is actually thumping his feet on fire. Okay. So, he's kind of rushing through it. And why does he thump? I have done this personally. I have walked on both fire as well as broken glass. So when you thumb your feet, it ensures that whatever fragments of <clears throat> particles have gotten stuck to your feet fall down because it starts having an effect only if it stays there for a certain period of time. And you are just trying to rush through that sheet of that bed of coal. So the coal fragments are dusted through your feet when you thumb on the dust on the coal and you simply walk through it quickly. That's one interesting option of, uh, uh, of rushing through. Convert harm into benefits. You see this man, he's holding a device that's capturing the voice of his boss and probably converting it into something nice. So he's converting the harm into benefit. Not advisable though, but an interesting example. Utilize harmful factors, especially environmental, to obtain positive use. When a base liquid is pumped through a pipe, it will deposit sediments on the inside surface of the pipe. When an acid is pumped through it, it corrodes the inner surface of the pipe. Pump acid and these liquids alternatively to the same pipe. So one deposits, other removes. One deposits, other removes. So we are balancing the harm of each of these components. Feedback, we all know that there are feedback, feedback mechanisms that are used to say, if, if there is a useful action that was performed as active input. So I think we are at 37. Uh, okay, fine, we'll go through a few more. Mediator. See? Yes. <laughs> Mediator was Batak in old Kabutar in olden days. Kabutar Jaja. Kabutar would carry the love letters to the the person you wanted to send it to. That's an example of mediator. If something requires an, an intermediary object uh, used to transfer or carry out an action, if it cannot be directly done. <clears throat> Self-service. So this guy is, you know, hammering himself. It's of a, inspired from a horse cut where the person Wax the horse so that the horse runs faster. He's acting himself to drive faster, to ride faster. An object must service the object, carry out supplementary and repair options. So something like a self-repair device. Conveyor belts. Copying. A simplified and inexpensive copy should be used in case of fragile, original, or an object that is convenient to operate. Okay, so when we are working on important presentation, if it's half done, we want to change the format. We say that, yeah, this guy copy banana. Original copy gaya, to meri band So we always want to create a copy of the of something that we have done with a lot of effort so that we do not dis destroy the original copy. Dispose. Replace an expensive object with a cheap one 
and compromise the other properties. Paper dress, tissue papers, an example of that. Replacement of mechanical systems. Replace the mechanical system with an optical acoustic thermal or factory system. This also talks, uh, tells us that when we are talking about matchcam, you can use the complete matchcam here. Olfactory method to determine when a tooth of a boring tool is broken. When I cook, I generally and see whether the amount of that is needed the dish is proper or not. My wife, my wife say that you. I don't know how you do it, but then I have a rather probably better developed olfactory sense, so I use it. So I replace the mechanical action of taking the food out and tasting it with an olfactory action. Automatic and hydraulic. So replace solid parts of an object with a gas or liquid. These parts can now use air or water to, for inflation or use or, or hydrostatic ocean. One interesting example of this is the uh, cranes that we see these days. Earlier days, they used to be mechanically fully operated. Now we have these hydraulic cranes that work really fine. Hydraulic and kinetic. Flexible membrane. See this guy? He has worn a flexible membrane on his head. Even if it's if he's being punched, it does not get harmed. One interesting example. Okay, fine. Now we move to flexible membrane. Replace customary construction with flexible membrane. A light one covered with a thin rubber film can withstand impact, high impact. Porous material, patent, bulb which holds for best pass of light. <laughs> so porous material was there yesterday. We can use composite material porous where we have, uh, it can reduce the weight and it can still provide required strength. Change of color. Change the color of the current environment. Design thinking also says that there are certain colors that are designed for certain actions. If you want to denote danger somewhere, don't write it in black, write it in red. People would get, get no, people would notice it more often. So there, there are certain colors that you know convey us something. So use that general conviction. Homogeneity. Object interaction with the main object to be made out of the same material as the main object. How many of you guys make rotis or chapatis? We generally try to use normal atta when we are uh, when we use the dough and we want to roll it out in the form of a roti. We generally, generally try to lower that dough ball into the normal atta slightly so that it easily you know uh, we can uh, make the chapati easily. So that's homogeneity. You are using atta on a dough of atta. Reject and regenerate parts. After completing its function or becoming useless, an element or an object is rejected or modified during its work process. A wire satellite antenna, when deployed in orbit, is expanded by compressed air. The air stretches a thin film shell, forcing the antenna into a shape of a ball. The vacuum of space and the sun's rays destroys the flexible shell, allowing the antenna to reflect radio waves. And it's also an example of using cheap objects, sacrificial objects. <clears throat> After completing its function or becoming useless, an element of the object is rejected or modified. This is like that. Transformation of property, change the physical state of the system. If anything is solid, make it liquid, make it gaseous, change the form, and you will see the functions changing as well. Its properties changing as well. used to have pencil which used to have lead it was solid then we moved to pen the writing medium was now ink which is liquid yes that way change the degree of flexibility now next is phase transition use the phenomenon of phase change we say that there is latent heat that when 
phase change happens solid becomes liquid liquid becomes gas that phase change can be used for inducing that effect when needed thermal expansion use expansion or contraction of material by changing its temperature a bi metallic strip is the best example used as a thermometer <clears throat> various materials with different coefficient of thermal expansion can be used for such functions accelerated oxidation if transition from one level of oxidation to the next level higher air is pumped through perforated pipes in sanitation stations to increase the activity of bacteria that clean the water so as to clean the water quickly make transition from one level of inert environment replace a normal environment with an inert one introduce a neutral substance or additives carry out a process in vacuum foam is used to isolate a fire from oxygen source see we provide a inert environment <clears throat> so in the fire extinguisher we have carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide so when we, when the fire when there is a lot of fire we generally spray that on fire it acts the uh, supply of oxygen and extinguishes the fire we use sand to douse fire on water surfaces so as to create an inert environment and douse fire is composite materials replace homogeneous material with composite material a fiber of high melting metal is introduced into a solid to increase its strength so with that guys we have now gone through all the 40 inventive principles as well and today we have gone beyond time i think we have gone well beyond time now the session is open for questions we will take 5 minutes of question It, it was uh, i ran through these things i understand i could have taken more time but then at least we were able to cover all the 14 inventive principles and the 39 standards in a very short duration of time any questions guys yeah we i have a question So when we talk about, I think Trez was talking about all into uh, problems with uh, you know physical and mechanical aspect. So how do you apply this in the service sector? In the service sector. Yeah. In the service sector, it can be applied very easily, and we have actually applied it in the insurance and healthcare domain. There is a separate branch of Trez that is used there. It's called Trez for business. Right now, we are talking about the general trees. Trees for business is a separate branch of study altogether, which deals with uh, such problems. Okay. So we have trees function analysis there and similar similar tools there as well. Okay. Okay. now since we have gone through these 40 inventive principles and 39 parameters is it possible to reject even after all 40 how to can be ha krishna i think i have answered your question are these principles only for mechanical problems like is no not at all they can be used for electrical mechanical any domain that you think of is it possible to reject even after all 40 prints possible to reject product failed means we can't get solution see jaydi dr patel 95 out of 100 cases you will get solution with these 40 principles if you can apply them to the intent and there is another tool of which is called as solving problems which we have not been able to cover that's a that's a topic And even with these topics happening here, I have been rushing through it. We have not been able to cover it to the extent that it is needed to. What I have taught you guys, or what I have, what we have gone through, is pretty much forty to fifty percent of the content of a level one trace certification. And this is a course of about forty hours. We are trying to do it in four hours. Yes, we are moving a little fast, but. 
in my personal experience and i have been practicing this for about 10 years i have never come across a problem that cannot be solved easily and i have 